Yates County and beyond. Welcome back to another episode of Invasive Species Friday. Through this short weekly podcast, we at the HCCE hope to bring you information about the invasive species you may see around this county. So let's swim along with this week's invasive, Starry Stonewort. Though this Eurasian native looks like a rooted plant, Starry Stonewort is actually a type of algae. Believed to have been transported in contaminated ballast water from Europe, it was first documented in North America in the St. Lawrence River between New York and Ontario in 1978. It has since spread to several states and has been confirmed in at least 14 New York counties. Unfortunately, Starry Stonewort is difficult to distinguish from its native relatives, so it's likely the spread of this invasive is underreported. Starry stonewort prefers to grow in lakes, ponds, and other deep, slow-moving water bodies. Unlike true plants, macroalgae are not vascular, do not extend above the water's surface, and do not flower. The star shapes that form near the base, giving the starry stonewort its name, are asexual reproductive structures called bulbous. These genetic clones can go on to form standalone plants. Stoneworts can also reproduce through fragmentation, like some of the other invasives we've previously talked about. The stem of this bright green algae can grow more than seven feet long and consists of a single plant cell. Each has four to six gelatinous branch-like structures called branchlets that are arranged in whorls around the stem and are variable in length. Sorry, stonewort tends to grow in sand or gravel substrate and can tolerate both salt and fresh water. It can survive for up to a week in 17% salinity. For easy reference, salinity between 5 and 26% is classified as brine. When used in brining or pickling for cooking, the salt solution is typically between 1.5 to 10%. The average ocean salinity is about 3.5%. In other words, starry stonework can handle incredible amounts of salt that most freshwater plants could not tolerate. In most locations, these salinity fluctuations are very rare, so the tolerance doesn't give too much of a leg up, but the starry stonewort does have other advantages to beat out its native competition. The invasive algae grows in dense mats that crowd out other aquatic plants and reduce light penetration. These pillow-like mats also make it hard for fish or other animals to swim or spawn, decreasing aquatic diversity, and the disruption of water flow can alter the nutrient cycle. Aggregations of starry stonewort can also release higher levels of phosphorus that would otherwise be trapped in the sediment. If you remember back to the curly pondweed and brittle naiad episodes of Invasive Species Friday, high levels of phosphorus in water can lead to harmful algal blooms, which are dangerous for people, animals, and the environment. Even without the threat of HABs, starry stonewort makes recreational activities much more challenging. Unfortunately, when an infestation is bad enough to inhibit movement, it can be very hard to remove. If the bulbous are dislodged or the algae is fragmented during manual removal, those parts will sprout new plants. Mechanical harvesting, especially hand pulling or diver-assisted suction harvesting, is most successful in localized areas. There are herbicide and aldicide treatments that have had moderate success in reducing biomass of an infestation, but chemical treatments in bodies of water are always tricky and require extensive planning and permits. As always, prevention and early intervention is the best option for dealing with invasive species. Check your boats and equipment for plant fragments and debris before moving to a new location and clean, drain, and dry everything. Dispose of debris and bait at disposal stations and disinfect all compartments with hot water. If you see starry stoneware on your adventures, please report it to IMAP Invasives. As we said earlier, this algae does look very similar to some of the native aquatic species, including the native stonewort, anchara, or muskgrass. Muskgrass is easier to distinguish as it emits a strong, musky, or skunky odor when crushed, hence its name. Native stonewort doesn't have the smell that chara has, but it also doesn't have the telltale star bulbous indicative of the starry stonewort. Being able to differentiate these lookalikes and increasing the accuracy of invasive reports is an important step to stop the spread of these aquatic invaders. And with that, we reach the end of this week's episode of Invasive Species Friday. Next week, we'll still be floating, this time with a feathery aquatic perennial. 
Until then, we at the Yates County CCE thank you for tuning in and supporting our fight against invasive species in Yates County.